What's up guys, Mason the Brock Anderson here, and this is The Blacklist Season 9, Episode 16, Helen Maki. So this one was pretty interesting. Um, <laughs> I was not expecting a lot of the twists and turns this one took, because first of all, you know, this whole setup of the FBI have to help get this woman out of trouble for her help to break into this place, turns into, well, Reddington just tells her, her that he will help her disappear, so then she helps him break into the place, but then a ROM ends up taking her in, and then it turns into this whole debacle, and it was all very interesting. First of all, not at all like a Blacklist episode at, hardly at all. You know, you've got your Blacklister, of course, that kind of centers the episode, but the way it was set up, I mean, the team was more so doing what Reddington needed them to do. It was almost set up more like a heist episode, and then just how it turned, and it turned into more of a can Reddington work with the team? He's got his own guys in there. They're kind of working against each other. And I think it's appropriate because with Aram now taking the wheel, there is going to be that sense of change. You know, how does the team function with him in charge now? And it's really interesting to see because at first I thought we were going to go with kind of a, oh, Aram is taking his own stand. He's doing what he believes is right now that he's got this role. And I, I kind of wondered if maybe there would be a little bit of respect from Reddington. But here at the end, it kind of shows that what Aram did, while technically morally correct, it also it involved subterfuge. It, it involved lying to the team and to Reddington, which is not how they should get the job done. You know, Yes, what he did was morally correct, but the way he did it, and I mean, even Cooper was talking about the end, like there has to be one side does things you know differently but the other side has to stand by the law and that's what the FBI is supposed to do in this I really liked that because it showed again I, I really did think they were going to go for oh yeah Rom good job bud but we know that even though Reddington is a criminal and he's not he's not exactly the best guy most of the time he is trying to do what is best for everybody he's trying to keep people alive. He's trying to to help the team. So for Rom to completely turn his back on him like that, there is a sense of injustice there. You know, as much as again, it is kind of morally right in in arresting this woman because of what she was doing, and we even find out he was absolutely correct about what she was doing and Ray Reddington ripped into her for lying to him about it. There was just this nice moment with Reddington and uh, Cooper at the end there that I feel like showed the, the mutual respect between the two of them that I think has really pervaded most of this series. So really, really fun stuff. A lot of great what the hell moments as well. I mean, you've already, already got the, the one scene with Rom completely betraying Reddington and getting uh, Helen arrested. That was already like a holy crap. And then you find out Lou is going to testify against Cooper, which in my opinion does sort of lessen my suspicion about him working with whoever is operating things behind the scenes. This feels more like he is just, he's not the smartest. He's not the brightest. Like clearly he's smart intelligence wise, but when it comes to making split second decisions, when it comes to kind of working in this world that Cooper and the team work in, he's not the brightest in that sense because clearly he made a lot of these decisions without thinking of the ramifications and now that he's here it's almost like he can't handle the pressure and instantly he's like yeah I'll talk I'll completely sell out my friend even though I'm the one that did a lot of this stuff for him and I'm the one that kind of pressured him I'm gonna talk because I need to save my family like there's something very I guess instinctual about that. It doesn't feel like he's doing this out of malice. It feels like he's doing it out of self-preservation, which is kind of stupid in this case. It's one of those uh, game theory prisoner dilemma the prisoner dilemma type of things where if neither of them had talked, they both would have just gotten two years and been fine. But now he's putting Cooper basically in, in the crap house. <laughs> so that was kind of a holy crap moment. I can't believe he would actually do that. But also, like I said, lessened my suspicion about him being involved and made me think he's much more of just like a you're an idiot type of character. You've also got the moment where Reddington reveals to Panabaker that he recorded their conversation when she had him torture the doctor, which completely blew my... Like, that moment was one of those holy crap, I can't believe he actually did that moments. 
and it sets up perfectly because yeah, it's it's what they needed at that time. They needed her to step up and help Harold get out of this sticky situation. And I don't know whether or not she thought about it from this point of view, but the fact that Reddington presented her with this idea and she was still kind of like, no, I'm not going to, and then he had to force her hand, it kind of shows that even though she is understanding of the whole situation, she is on the team's side, there's an extent to what she is willing to do without being forced to do it. Like, she's she has done a lot for the task force, and she's talked about that, but there's still that you're pushing it a little too far to the point where she doesn't want to help you anymore. And that's where Reddington has to be the one to step in to kind of give that little nudge over the line to get her to help. And then of course, just the ending and having a nice moment where Cooper comes back in. The fact that he's going to be an agent in the field now, that's kind of interesting with a ROM leading the task force. Uh, yeah, a lot of great moments. And the fact that Cooper is not going to prison, I think is a good decision because well, we could have had some interesting stuff where he's maybe on the inside, maybe trying to, to survive. I feel like this gives the team sort of a deadline. It's it's something that keeps them on track. They can't just be like, all right, well, let's go do this now. And, oh, this other thing's popped up. Let's go do this. They have to stay focused on this main plot now for the rest of this season. And I think that's going to keep things a lot more concise and not so much... As, as much as I do love some of the episodic, like, oh, let's go tackle this other case over here while Reddington's making his moves in the background. I also really like it when they focus in and go, all right, we're, we've got a target. We've got something to work towards. Let's do that now. So yeah, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to see what comes next. So with that, on to the next episode. I'll see you there. And now episode 17, El Conejo. This episode certainly gives a whole new meaning to avocados from Mexico. Um, now I'm going to be wondering every single time I see one of those commercials, I'm like, were these provided by the cartel? Who knows? We'll never know. Apparently it's a big deal. I don't know if that's actually true or not, but I'd like to think that it is. <laughs> and the cartel are the ones creating the commercials as well. Anyways, the that story with Aram and Nick and their whole thing, that was okay. You know, I kind of figured Nick was going to be a douchebag at some point. I kind of figured... That whole thing was going to play out and something was going to go wrong with it. I didn't know what, but to find out that Aram apparently created a weapon on accident and Nick didn't tell him about it, I mean, it fits. I, I don't really see anything else they could have done with that story that would have been as interesting. So it was fine. I, I enjoyed it for the most part. The stuff with Red, though, that was really the highlight of the episode for me because not only do we get to see some of these videos that he created for Liz and where his mindset is as well. Like those were some, some of the best moments I think in this episode, we're seeing how his mind works, what he thinks about this organization and the business that he is in. And it really is an interesting look into his psyche. And I think that was really impressive, but not only do we get that, we also finally start to get some more answers. You know, that one moment when he starts talking about, how it's it's all a facade, you know. There's a there's a a trick, an illusion that you've made been made to believe. That's the one time that you're really struggling, and you need to rethink everything you thought you knew. And so for him to realize it was the safe that he thought was was still his safe was not actually his safe. Very clever. And then to find out that apparently Mr. Kaplan is involved. <laughs> Holy crap! I don't know if she's. Because the thing is, if I remember how her story ended, I'm pretty sure that they were on a bridge and he shot her and she fell off the bridge. So there's a chance she could have survived. Although, I don't know, I'm, I'm feeling like she was rescued by somebody. God, I don't know. It's been so long since I've, I've watched the seasons where she was kind of the main focus and she turned out to be trying to sabotage Reddington. I don't remember how her story came to an end. And obviously I can't look it up because if she is involved, if she does somehow come back in this season, I'll find out. So, God, I hate the fact that I, I don't remember it all, though. Um, but no, finding out she was the one that created the safe, it's very interesting. And honestly, it does make me wonder 
is she going to be the one that's been behind everything? It's I find that hard to believe because a lot of what she did, if I remember right, was to help Elizabeth. Like, she actually did have a soft spot for her. I don't know if we ever found out why. Maybe we'll get some answers on that. What if she turns out to be Katarina? That would be quite the twist. Um, but no, I, I do feel like it would be weird if she was the one that had Liz killed because I don't think she wanted Liz dead. So, I don't know. Maybe she thought that she was going to get Reddington killed and accidentally got Liz killed instead. Possibly. But bringing her back into it, I think is a great move. And again, it gets the excitement and the adrenaline going as I'm watching and gets me ready to see what happens next. And oh, I don't like the fact that it's late because that means I've only got one more episode in me before I need to go to sleep. And I'm just so excited. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen next. And honestly, I've missed this feeling. You know, everything that happened with Townsend and the fake Katarina and all of that stuff, I feel like I didn't quite have this feeling that I do now. I feel like there was only a couple of times that I really started to get that feeling. You had the the moment where Katarina was killed, but it turned out to be she faked her death. That was kind of interesting, but then they didn't really do much with it. And then everything to do with Townsend and Liz was just really frustrating, as I expressed. But then we had that moment at the end where things started to get revealed to her, and that's when I started to actually get interested again. This season has just got me... It's got me by the balls. I'm just... I'm in. I'm excited. I want to know more. I'm forming theories. This is the Blacklist at its best. I'm so glad that it feels like this season was a return to form for them. Especially considering... I'm pretty sure I heard that the last season, season 8, was supposed to be how they originally wanted to end it. I'm really glad that we got more, not only because we are getting some more answers about Red, I feel like, and we're learning more about him, but also because we we have a lot of really exciting stories that I feel like they are doing a good job of getting the, the audience back into it and really telling that engaging, gripping story that makes you want to see what happens next and has you on the edge of your seat every single week. So... Really appreciating what they're doing so far this season. I can't wait to see what comes next. So on to the final of these three episodes. I'll see you there. And now episode 18, Laszlo Jankovitz. This one is a terrible episode for me to end on for the night. But we're going to end on a cliffhanger. <laughs> oh my goodness. So they presented us with the possibility, and I even said this, the possibility that if Mr. Kaplan is indeed behind all of this, why would you kill Elizabeth? Well, maybe she was trying to kill Red, didn't realize that Van Dyke was going to go the, off the orders of Townsend, which was kill Elizabeth in front of Red before killing him. So they presented that possibility, which in my mind means it's not the case. <laughs> because, I don't know, just giving me that idea right off the bat, right away, when the idea of Mr. Kaplan is, is introduced, it's almost like, yeah, here, Here's what you should believe. Here's the answer. On top of that, if I remember right, pretty sure Marvin Gerard's the one that presented this idea. If I think. he's Because he was the one that Reddington was talking to. So that almost kind of pushes me more onto him. Which I'm kind of glad about because, again, I, I almost kind of felt like he was the obvious suspect. He was the obvious one. The one that the show wanted me to... to suspect all along. I'm glad that they've given us a red herring. Because, one, it makes me feel like, okay, so I'm right about him then, aren't I? I'm, I'm almost positive that I'm right about him because now the show is like, no, here's the real person behind it all. It's Mr. Kaplan. I'm like, no. No, you can't fool me with that. You can't fool me with that. I, I'm, on, I'm on this. Even though I'm really tired, I probably miss, like, several things that pointed me in the opposite direction. I'm going to wake up tomorrow and be like, God, I'm a total idiot. Anyways, but on kind of my theories about all of that, first of all, I'm pretty sure the little old lady with the glasses, I'm pretty sure, almost positive, is going to end up being Mr. Kaplan's sister. I don't know how or why. In fact, I think who we saw in the end, it was a little far away, but I'm pretty sure that's going to be her in the building. And I'm pretty sure if 
my theory is correct. Marvin Gerard is the one behind all of this. He probably reached out to her and said, hey, Reddington is the one that got her killed. You want to help me with this? You want to pretend to be her? Because, yeah, it's it gives Reddington somebody to go after. It gives him a theory. It gives him... It gives him an answer, and so in his mind, he thinks he knows what's going on. He thinks he's going up against Kate Kaplan, but in reality, he doesn't know who his actual opponent is, and it's very clever, you know, because if you set somebody up as, hey, here's who you're facing, while secretly stabbing him in the back the entire time, it really does sort of throw everything off. So I'm, I'm pretty positive that's what's going on here, and if so, brilliant from uh, Marvin Gerard. Brilliant planning, brilliant just setup in all of this. I really hope I'm right about this because I, I feel whenever they gave me this is the answer, I got so excited because I'm like, no, I'm pretty sure I've been on this. I'm pretty sure I'm right about this now. I've been calling this for most of this season. Again, I don't know if that's just because I have experienced enough of mysteries and twists and red herrings and all of that. I don't know if that's why I was so on top of it with this, but I just had a theory that it was somebody working for Reddington that was behind all of this. And again, my main focus was either Hetty or Marvin Gerard, and Gerard just seemed like the more likely of the two. So I, anyways, I talked about that, that enough. As far as Laszlo Jankowicz and all of the stuff with him and the LSD and all that, it was fine. Uh, it was kind of interesting to see Reddington fake shooting somebody. He's not the type of person that I would expect to put fake blood. I don't know exactly how they set it up, whether it was like blood packets that exploded or if he had like red paint <laughs> paintballs in his gun or something. He's not the type of person that I'd expect to fake a death like that, though. So it was really interesting whenever the guy was like, oh yeah, thanks for that, and you know, got up and walked away. It, that's just, that's not the style that I expect from him. So it was a little different, but his whole, you know, why he was looking into Laszlo and all that stuff, I, I, I'm i glad that they tied it in pretty well, you know, introducing this cleaner that apparently was close with uh, Kate Kaplan and all of that. Um, as far as the team is concerned, that's where things sort of fell apart a little bit for me. I was interested to find out more because Wrestler and Cooper were doing their little snooping into both Cole and... I don't remember the name of the the lawyer that got him out now. Oh, it's going to bug me that I don't remember his name. But I, I was interested at first at what they were going to find out. But then it just kind of turned into Cooper showing that he's stressed out about the situation. Which, I mean, we kind of already know... We, most people watching should know, yeah, of course it's stressful. He's got to figure out who did this and he's got to get to the bottom of all this within a month or else he's going to prison or at least going to trial. So, yeah, I I feel like this whole scene and having him blow up on wrestling and all that, it felt a little unnecessary and I feel like it, it just showed something that I think we all would have already known and probably could have had, like, one line. You didn't have to have this whole scene with a follow-up scene where he apologizes. It felt just, like, added time onto the episode more than it was more character development. Where there was character development was with Park and Aram. And I do wish we'd gotten maybe a little bit more time with Aram in charge because it feels like they're kind of speed-running through a lot of his transitioning into being the the director and the the head of the team now granted this may be a short thing anyway it may end up changing at the end of the season after they find out who did it and cooper i i would assume gets off and no problems and he can go back to being in charge of the team so maybe they don't want to spend too much time on this because it's not going to last very long but there are some changes and aram is different than Cooper as a leader and we can even see there's a moment where he's having to basically do all of these reviews for everybody and it's hard for him and understandably so he's somebody that he cares about all these people he while he does have a moral code and he wouldn't want to bend the rules for them he also is somebody that wears his heart on his sleeve so he's more than likely willing to bend the rules for people that he cares about and trusts to the degree that he does the rest of the team. 
So having this moment, I, I do think, is warranted. However, I feel like kind of what they do with it, it doesn't really focus on Rom that much. It's more so focused in on Park. And that whole story just felt kind of contrived. You know, you've got her talking about, oh yeah, my headaches are fine. They're, they're triggered by, you know, loud, sh like loud sounds and bright light. You know, loud sounds when we shoot guns all the time. <laughs> as soon as she said that, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm sure those are no problem then. But she brings this up. And of course, you know, at some point, especially after Rom hands her the thing and says, hey, you do it. At that point, you know she's going to get caught in a situation where the headaches flare up again, and she decides, you know what, I was wrong about this. These are worse than I thought. And I just feel like that that's not as interesting as seeing how Rom is going to handle this situation, seeing how he would deal with, you have to review these people, and you have to do it fairly. You can't bend the rules, because if you do you're kind of just basically letting them walk all over you. You're not really being in charge at that point. Seeing how he would deal with that, I feel like could have been more interesting, but instead he just hands it off to her, and it's more so her story of, I need to step back because I'm dealing with this problem, and it's bad, and it's affecting my work to the point where I let this crazed lunatic get away. So I was just a little disappointed in that regard. I feel like it... There's a lot more potential to focus on a Rom than Park. But what we got was fine. You know, I don't mind that story. It just, it did feel contrived because of the fact that, oh, she has to track down a guy in a shipping yard with all of these containers that, it, yeah, if a shot went off inside one of them, it would trigger her headaches. What a surprise. What are the chances? So with all that being said, though, I think these three episodes really just continue that feeling that I got from the last three that I watched. It's that momentum that's building right now. As we're getting closer to the end, we're getting closer to figuring out who actually is behind all of this. And then to end it with that big cliffhanger, I really don't know if Weech is going to be okay. Because <laughs> she, she's been somebody that's been by Reddington's side all season. You know, obviously, he has that connection with her sister. So... This would sort of set up for possible drama between Reddington and Mercia? Mirka? Uh, Mierka? I don't know. I don't remember her name. <sighs> I gotta get better with names. But this would set up for potential drama, though, if in his rush and his aggression and his, I guess, blindness to everything going on because of how emotional he is trying to track down who got Liz killed. And all of this, that led to possibly the death, and if not the death, then at least the severe injury, more than likely, of her sister. I feel like that's going to really drive a wedge in between Reddington and any possible hope for a future with her. So I don't know how they're going to handle that. I don't know if that maybe that'll more so lead into next season when he's trying to talk to her again. I don't even know how they're going to handle the last season. I mean... I guess we'll finally get some some true answers on who he is because we've already gotten some oh yeah this is the answer oh no actually this is the answer you've already had that a few times I still don't think we know the full truth yet and we don't even know what happened to Katarina in all of this stuff and honestly it's funny because I I made the one-off joke of like was Kate Katarina and I thought about it I'm like Kate it's not Katarina and Kate are pretty close. I don't think that's going to be the case, but there's a chance. I mean, he said there's no way that she would harm Liz. That would be the case if she was Katarina. And he had known her for a long time. They were friends for a long time. I'm starting to see some connections here that I'm like, is that going to be true? Was that something that people had theorized about? Was that something that... Elizabeth had theorized about I don't know but I yeah it's I'm gonna have to rewatch this entire series when I'm done though because man there are so many things now that I'm looking back I'm thinking if some of what I'm thinking is true if some of these theories are true it's gonna really reshape my view of the events that happened throughout this entire series so with all that being said though that's it for these three episodes 
Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What were your thoughts on these three episodes? Let me know. We can talk about and discuss all that good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe to future Blacklist reviews. And until next time, I hope you guys have a great day. I'll talk to you all later. Peace out.